Hey guys, this is Charles with the Charlotte Area Historical Gamers, and today we're going to take a look at Vassal. It looks like Vassal's updated their website. Uh, somebody contacted me last night and basically said that they were having a hard time figuring out Vassal. And I thought I'd create a video with the new Vassal layout and explain how to download um, the, the program because not everybody understands Computer Talk. And when you go to the website and you click on Get Vassal, you are directed to a GitHub page. So GitHub is a place to store programs and things like that. And you can ignore all of this, but for the most part, if you're looking for a Windows device, this means Windows 64. And this is Windows older operating system 32. You almost always want to use the Windows 64 operating system. And there's your other. So you're going to download this and install that to your computer. All right. And then what I want you to do is create a new folder on your desktop and call this modules. Now you can put it anywhere as long as you just put all the, the modules that you go to in one place. And we're going to uh, open this. And everything else is the default as per the rest of the uh, videos that have been done in the past, but I'm just going to go ahead and go through this. And you click Next. Standard is fine. And Install. And this is going to install the program that opens up the modules. And each one of the games has its own module. When you first open it up, you'll notice it's completely empty. And if you want to see other players online, you always want to enable server status. And all of these windows are scrollable. Right. And then you can click on refresh and see all the players who are currently online playing different games. All right. So what we're going to talk about now is how to get a module installed. So we'll go back to the Vassal website. And we're going to scroll down to our library of modules. And so now you pick a game that you want. Um, we'll just do a Combat Commander. I don't even know if I've ever done one on Combat Commander. So we'll start with Europe. And um, you'll notice there's some expansions here too. So we're going to uh, download the expansions and install those extensions, I should call them, right? So the first thing we'll do is download this by right-clicking and Save Link As. Now the reason you use Save Link As is because it lets you put the file where you want it instead of putting it in your downloads. So go to Desktop, go to our Modules folder, and we're inside there. We'll just save that there. And we're also, while we're here, going to save each one of these. Not the VMAG because we've already got this one. Uh, the VMDX paratroopers and it remembers that place Stalingrad Normandy resistance Fall of the West you get the idea here Okay, so VMOD is the actual um, module for the game, and these VMDX are extensions, you can see by the labels here, of the, the game to add like additional features and things like that. So the first thing we'll do is we'll open up the module, and we're going to open up this one. 
So one of the first things it'll ask you is a user ID and a password. So the password really doesn't matter. You don't want to use anything complex and you want to make sure that you use something that you can remember. Um, the password is only used to separate your files from your opponent's files. So as long as you have separate passwords, you can't look at each other's pieces and things like that. So it's not like a if you ever forget it, it won't let you back into uh, Vassal, but it will um, prevent you from opening log files that are uh, locked down with your password. So that's why I recommend keeping it simple. It's not tied to a credit card or anything like that, so it won't hurt anything. We'll let this finish and come right back. Okay. Now Combat Commander is open back here. And it's going to ask us if we want to do a game solo offline or online. We'll do online. And we'll just pick a user ID. And that's pretty much it. So once you've got it loaded the very first time, you'll notice that the, we can close that. You'll notice that the Combat Commander shows up here and you'll never have to browse for that again unless you uninstall and reinstall so in order to add the extensions we click right click on that and select add extension and we're going to pick each one of these and just in case you care you'll notice that the module is automatically uh, put into a folder called modules for 2.4 and there it is so let's add each one of the other modules extensions doesn't really matter what order you put it in Okay, so now we're going to see uh, if we click on that little drop down arrow there, all the extensions that we've loaded. We've got all the ones that we loaded now. And we'll double click to open up the game. This time it'll skip asking us for a user ID and password. And we'll notice all the modules are loaded underneath the scenario list. And this whole processing, this slow part right here, just uh, the first time that you load each module, it'll happen, but after that it doesn't. So right now it's loading the extensions. I'm going to pause that because it might take a while for to go through all of those, maybe another minute or so. Okay, so that took a little bit longer than what I expected, but here we are at the screen after all the extensions have loaded. We'll select Game Online just for fun. And you'll see we're on the main room online. And the first thing you always want to do is create a new room and just name it whatever you want. And then when people join the game, they'll basically just click on that twice or right click and join the room. Um, and they'll be able to join the room. You can right click on it and lock the room after your opponent's in there. Um, anybody who joins the room can see what you're doing. So. Uh, and then some of the games they can change the pieces so it might be a good idea to lock the room to keep people from messing with you and to start a new game you're going to click on scenarios and just kind of go through the list of the games that you want to play so let's say we want to play pegasus bridge which is one of my favorites you'll choose a side that you want to play either united states or german Wait, British or German? Yeah. Or Solitaire.
So you can start a log file, and a log file basically keeps a record of all the um, moves in the game, and you can open up this file and replay it, and you can kind of like store a record of your gameplay and see how you did, if you want to change things uh, like that. But we're not going to do that for now. And we're just going to go through the steps for Combat Commander specifically. So here is um, how you hide the server controls over here. Uh, this is if you want to um, change to a side, like if you want to change from Solitaire over to a specific faction. Here's your notes. So um, a lot of times some of the Vassal modules will have a list of scenario instructions listed here, combat. I'm sorry, Commands and Colors, Ancients, and Napoleonics, all those have a very nice list here. Um, the private list is kind of notes you can keep to yourself. And then there's also a re reveal uh, option here. So like if you're doing like simultaneous movement, you can write down your move or your text or whatever you want to in here. Um, and you could say, I move, I choose this space. Right? And then you click it, and your opponent can't see it until you reveal it. So, new. I mean, you get the idea of it. This game isn't like that, but you can click reveal. Like, your opponent can see that you've logged something, and then you can click reveal. And it'll reveal it. All right, so here's your pieces. Um, sometimes it's better to stretch this out a bit just so you can see the extra pieces here. So this is the OOB, and you can kind of click through the list here. The control, mark different markers. So let's say you need blaze or trenches. Here's your units. Like if you get additional units for the reserve table. For each and then each faction has its own set of leaders and units and equipment and all that stuff. Here's your player aids. Um, if you're doing opportunity fire. And you've got a unit and you've got a card and you want to do opportunity fire you press this button and basically it lets your opponent know to stop and then it makes a loud machine gun noise which is kind of fun the first time after a while it gets a little obnoxious <laughs> uh, this is where if you play a card and uh, you right click you play an order uh, after you're done doing your order you just basically click next order and it removes that card and lets you open up this space um, here's your time marker so it reshuffles the deck. Actually, uh, you might have to reshuffle it yourself. I can't remember if it shuffles it in the game or not. Uh, and then you'll have to uh, adjust your VPs. We'll get to the VPs in just a second. So here's your starting units for the scenario, and you're going to drag and drop those according to the scenario notes in the book. And to drop those, you just click on it, and you just drag it right here or wherever you want. So here's where your casualties will go. And then once you reach the surrender marker, you'll do a check, just like you usually do. Maybe that's automatic, I can't remember. All right, this is where you do your decks. Um, after you shuffle your deck, uh, you'll basically draw a card, and it will put a card into the slot for you. Uh, notice over here it says Unrevealed. If you want to reveal it, you'll uh, play it or reveal it, right? So uh, play it. We'll drop it right here, as we discussed before. After we do our order, we click on um, Next Order, and it will basically remove that and let you do another. So uh, let's say we're doing Defender Scenario, and we want to do uh, an order, or you could play it as an action, right? And the actions will go down, down below here. Uh, 
there's your decks. So let's say we wanted to reshuffle. Just right click on that and two uh, draw pound. We saw that already. Here's our hands. This will um, hide all units so you can kind of see the board better. Uh, you'll notice at the time track up at the top, um, the year is here, the OB stats, uh, the reserves that are coming in on future turns are here. And you can click on this to hide the units. Click on this to hide everything. Check line of sight. Just basically draw a center to center line and you can kind of check out the terrain that's in the way you can take a picture and export it if you want to save it and you can zoom in and out of the map uh, you can zoom out here or you can do fit height which will fit the height of the board game into the, the window again you can adjust this a little bit if it helps and do fit height maybe fit width Away. I don't remember what that does. And that's pretty much it uh, for the game. You can always right click on a unit, see the different functions. So as you're playing, you can activate a unit, activate the units around it. You can select a target for um, an attack and right click and select target. As you play your cards, and you can also do eliminations. You can do status functions. You can break a unit. You can deploy into a squad. Let's see. It's already a squad. Let's see. You can break a unit. You can unbreak a unit. make him a veteran. So that's it. I hope that was enough to get you used to the new Vassal and potentially introduce you to how to use Combat Commander Europe and add all the extensions. And have a good day. One last thing I'd like to mention is Vassal Wargamers Americas, where we have about almost 3,000 people uh, online looking to play games. Uh, you just type the time zone that you're in and what game you want to play, and uh, people connect here playing games. We also have um, uh, a European edition for European time zones and Asia Pacific for time zones. So this is kind of not really geared for separation of people, but like separation for potential language issues or time issues. Uh, trying to plan things like that. So America's is the biggest one. Uh, Europe is uh, pretty big. And I think Asia Pacific has actually gotten bigger through the years. Um, so yeah, it's a good time. All right, take care. Bye.